Good morning, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, and welcome to this week's Weekly Energy Boost. My name is Eli Sheva, and I am blessed to have with me two very special guests. They've been here before. We got them to come back again. Please welcome Batya and Chaim Solomon, Thank all the you. way from uh, sunny Florida. We are streaming live here on Facebook from Los Angeles, California. Batya and Chaim are teachers at the Kabbalah Centers in Florida. And whoever comes wagons west, I, I try to get them <laughs> into the show. David's not with us this morning. But like in every weekly energy boost, we're going to share with you the most powerful, practical, and empowering insights, prescriptions, and wisdom so that you can not only navigate the next seven days of your life, but you can take this wisdom and this, this understanding into your daily lives any day of the week, any year of the century. Now we're in a new decade, new decade right? So that, yes. that takes on a whole new meaning. But the, the wisdom of Kabbalah is really an ancient technology that remains to be relevant and impactful even thousands and thousands of years later. So we're focusing this week, in a way, by popular demand, on how to really live a spiritual life. I think especially in the month of January, people are, are geared up to be better versions of themselves than they were last year, all the resolutions, right? Somewhere in the middle of this month, probably sometime this week, people are going to start to regret the, the commitments they yes. make. But this week's energy specifically, we're now entering a period on the Kabbalistic calendar that does have the tendency to throw our darkness back at us, right? You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you, th well, not anymore, of course, but maybe 30, 40 years ago, you threw something out the car window and it came back in the car. <laughs> That's what this week is. This week begins a process where the universe is, is bringing back to us things that maybe we thought we worked on, mm -hmm. we thought we transformed, but mm -hmm. if it's coming back to us, what is it now in these six to eight weeks, it's, it's an indication that it is essential for us to work on. What kind of, of advice would you give people, right, we're at the beginning, we'll have weeks and weeks to talk about it, but I think one of the most difficult things about this period is you thought you were done with this issue. I thought I was done with this. It's not my, you know, I worked on it, I, I transformed it, I elevated it, I read books, I took classes, I meditated, I, I triumphed. Mm -hmm. And what's going on? Well, if you think about it like, uh, let's say, the marathon, a person who runs a marathon is running all the steps, every, every foot of the 26 miles. When they reach one mile, they still have 25 miles to go, but they've already achieved a mile. I think the, one of the traps that we find in spiritual growth is, like you said, I think I got rid of that. But remember, if you have, let's say, five aspects of fear and you get rid of one, you still have four left. So when you're confronted again with the next fearful situation, it's not the same. It's less than it was, and you've progressed. So like the runner, it's going to run the same way for 26 miles, but they've got a mile, and then two miles, and three miles. They're progressing, because if you think you haven't progressed at all, then you pretty much give up. Depression, hopelessness, helplessness comes in. Well, that, there's, I think there's a paradigm shift that needs to take place that when some, a challenge comes up, it's a bad sign. It means mm -hmm. I'm doing something wrong. Exactly. No, no, it's a great sign. So there you it's go. That's the sign. that's the Kabbalistic spin on challenges where yes. having those challenges is no indication that something is wrong. In fact, it it's often quite the opposite. Absolutely. I see it from a different perspective. I would I see it as in terms of peeling away layers. You know, I had a conversation um, with someone recently. We were at a wedding and uh, she had lost her husband uh, recently. Um, within the last uh, over a year ago and she mentioned to me that uh, she, you know in the midst of the wedding she just felt his, his, the lack of him and was um, just overcome with so much grief you know and she thought she had put it behind her and out of my mouth came you know grief is comes in layers it's like you peeled off a layer and then you find again there's just and you you know shocked that it's, it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. And you know what? When I pointed that out, it, something she was so able to release it even more. I was like, yeah, that's what it is. It's a layer. It's not, um, 
you know, the spiritual world is, is not finite the way we're so used to looking at life. It's not linear. It's right? not yeah. linear. It's not finite. And, and nothing is as it seems. You know, we think challenges are bad things. And uh, I always say this in my classes. It's that you think that, we, you know, the myth uh, that we're, we, we've been brainwashed, which is very damaging, by the way, is to think that, you know, when am I going to be free of problems? When is that time going to come when I can retire? Oh, my God, that's the most terrible thing that could possibly happen to you. This is the world of action. This is not the world of rest. This is the world of action. We need those challenges. The challenges are there actually are blessings in disguise to helping us grow to our next level. So whatever you're going through right now, if it's a uh, dealing with a loss of any kind or a threat of any kind or the uncertainty of any kind, you could you can go two ways with this. Either see as like, when is the pain going to go away and let me go back to sleep or... What's the upside? What can I gain from this? What's the, how can I learn from this challenge? What is it teaching me? What's my next level of strength, of certainty, of uh, perseverance? Most of all, compassion. What's my next level of love? Well, wait, a lot of the people who are listening right now, I'm sure, are longtime listeners. But for the those people that are relatively new to the show, maybe we can talk for a minute about why our challenge is essential. What, what's the purpose challenges serve, right? If they're not bad things, they're good things. You just gave a few examples of, you know, what's my next level, but what what good is a challenge for somebody who thinks they're good where they're at? How does, what does Kabbalah say about growth and and embracing challenges on the empowering end, please? On, in, the, <laughs> yeah. in the simple story, you know, the, Zor the Kabbalists write that light can only come out of darkness. So our job is turning those curses into blessings as we would first look at them. But I always think of the challenges that come my way as an opportunity to pay back what I may have done, sometimes I know and sometimes I forgot, something in the past. Because we all now come to the realization cause and effect. So if something's coming my way, I've learned... But I'm a good person, class, Chaim. I've, yes. I've not hurt anybody. I've, I've, I'm uh, generous, I'm kind, I'm a good person. Yep. I do not deserve these challenges. Yes, that's the big trap. Because if there is a cause and effect, it's not that I'm not a good person. But like we were saying before, like Bhatti was saying, there's layers. And so if you take away one layer, if you remove one layer of fear, and like we said, you have four more to go, you have to face a fearful situation to be able to take away the next one. So if you look at them like you're paying your credit card, you go all month and you charge, you charge, you charge, you charge, you charge, you get the bill at the end of the month. Have you never looked at the bill and said, I don't remember making that charge? And then when you investigate, you That's say, oh, yes. That's the story of my now, life. <laughs> now I remember, exactly. But you know, it's cause and effect. I mean, they very rarely will make a mistake and charge you for something you didn't charge. But if you forgot, you forgot. So we're all good people, but that doesn't mean that we can't improve because the creator started us out at 100. Our job is to manifest it. Well, I, I've, over the years that we've been doing the show, I've gotten a lot of emails. I mean, I, I get questions almost every week. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but what, you know, X, Y, and Z is too difficult, or I don't see the light in A, B, and C. And I, I put together a list of them, and I, I'm sure we're going to get more in the comments. I'm hoping that I can. I want to just backtrack a second here. What is the purpose of a challenge? Now, what's the purpose of life? And what's the purpose that we incarnated into this life in the first place? If we look at it from a much greater perspective, then the challenges will make a lot more sense. If you're looking going through life in the terms of just your five senses, wake up in the morning, go through the daily grind, uh, not even stopping and asking ourselves, like, why am I doing this? Why did I marry this person? Why are we having yeah, children? That's one of the conundrums we're going to tackle on this well, show. Well, there you go. <laughs> Exactly. Like, why, why, why? Why am I still stuck in a job that I hate? You know, why Why do I have so much fear? Why do I, why can't I find the solution? All of these whys, whys, whys are feeling stuck is because the focus is in the wrong place. The focus is way, you know, life is like right here in your face. You can't see the whole picture. It's so, so based on, we make decisions based on what we think we know. How about just saying, Let's take the focus out a little bit more of a bird's eye perspective or even angelic perspective. Or really, really, really take the, the point of view and look, look at the big picture. We came into this world for one thing and one thing only. It's to love bravely. To love bravely. Let's just like let that sink in for a minute. Love bravely? Yeah. 
Take away those walls of the heart that block us from connecting to other people, block us connecting to our divine selves, block us from living courageously. If you knew you couldn't fail, if you knew you wouldn't be humiliated if you, if you opened your mouth, if you knew that uh, you could only be supported, how would you live your life? You know, it would take, life would take on a whole nother meaning. So what are the challenges? The challenges are there to show me where I'm not meeting my potential. I'm not loving enough. I don't see that in myself. I see it in the person who's not loving enough to me. I'm not putting out 100% of my effort. I don't see that in myself. I see that in the way other people are not giving me enough. And therefore, the challenge looks like it's a bad thing. It's a painful thing. It looks like uh, people are doing things to me. The only reason they're doing things to me is because I'm not home in me <laughs> to realize the bigger picture. And so if, if you're willing to, if we're willing to take a challenge and, and really turn it on its head and say, look at it from a different perspective, wow, that challenge, it's like the teacher you had in school, you know that teacher, or there was per someone in your life and they pounded at you and they pounded at you and whatever you did, it wasn't enough, it wasn't enough, it wasn't enough until they like broke your ego or they pushed you so far beyond what you think what you could have done and you look back and you go, oh my God, that's amazing. That person, you know, in the moment seemed like the worst challenge, right? But you look back at it now, it's like, wow, what a blessing that event or person or situation turned out to be that made me stronger, smarter, more capable, more loving, and mostly more compassionate. It's really, if you reframe everything and, and, and think in your own life, check, out, check it against that. Loving and compassion, kindness, and see where those challenges fall in that. Not because of what they're not doing to you, but because of taking responsibility for where I'm not, I could have been, you know, instead of working harder at my job, you know, I was busy into myself. And then later when I get fired, you know, am I making those connections? Or maybe I got fired because it turned out to be the best thing in my life. Because being fired is actually a promotion from the universe helping me to go to my next level. It's funny you mentioned that. Before I came to the Kabbalah Center, I was working at a uh, private elementary school teaching kids physical education. And had a great time for three and a half years, but I knew that I had to do something spiritual. I was on my spiritual path already, getting involved in some teaching, but the job was so comfortable and so nice that one day the woman who owned the school, for no reason, right before Thanksgiving. For no reason, quote unquote. Exactly. <laughs> she calls me into the office. She says, we're, you know, we're terminating your contract after Thanksgiving. And it took me about a microsecond, and I almost got up and hugged her because I realized it was the universe pushing me out of my comfort zone of working with the kids and swimming every day and things like that to get out and become the spiritual teacher and help me at that point to find the Kabbalah Center to be here. I, I think the now. difficult right. thing is that you rarely want to hug the person who's yeah, delivering exactly. you the verdict, right? right? Unless, you, unless yes. you're married to them right. and then... Well, well no, I, I, I figured she'd think I was nuts if I'd gotten up to <laughs> hug her after uh, she just fired me. I'm just going to so remember that for future reference, yes. by the way, okay. next time I push you to the... Uh, oh, okay. Next now give me a hug. And that hug. Hi, no, 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 no. Now give me a hug. Yeah, give me a hug. But no, but I think that that's. I mean, I can as as I hear you telling the story, countless movies, novels, sure. TV shows where that's the epic moment in right. the main character's life is sure. somebody hands them a package they weren't expecting, they don't think they're right. capable of handling. And that's really where the triumph begins is when they realize this is the key yes. to my next level. Can, can, is it okay to mention a movie? Well, please. Okay. You we we the, get royalties. Okay. The original Karate Kid. The wax on, wax off, sweep the floor, et cetera, paint the, you know, and he thought he was being used by his teacher, who he trusted in the beginning until finally he saw how all the pieces fit together. And he realized he was actually learning to be a great karate expert by doing these things that he thought were completely disconnected. And so, like we were saying, that happens to us a lot. You meet somebody one day, okay, you happen to meet them. A year later, you come across them, and they happen to be the one who network you to a new job or introduce you to the love of your life or things like that. We don't know how the universe is going to put the pieces together. We're learning in Kabbalah how to trust the universe, that if we put out, as Bach is calling it, you know, love bravely and compassion and kindness, if we put out goodness, it will come back to us. But realize that it's the universe's choice in cahoots with our soul, what the right way and the right form. Right. The, it's like the, the matrix is real, yes, basically. exactly. I want to go through this list. I guess mm -hmm. we'll get through as many as we can. This is okay. the, the viewer or listener, right. listeners, top 10 uh, challenges. Or I don't even want to call them challenges. It's 
I think that it's really easy to love someone when you love them, but the real test is how much do you love them when you hate them? Right. And, and the when things are going are your you way, are you setting us up for this? No, <laughs> no, no, sorry. Okay. Forget that. I forgot that you're married. Okay. Right. You but can it, bring us on an upper episode. I talk about relationships. That's what, that's what we'll do next. <laughs> um, no, that that it's easy to be spiritual when things go your way. Right. When when you see the hand of God in everything that you do. When yes. when your your checklist is or the the things on your list are getting checked off when things are not and this is really the the I would say maybe the 10 12 most common mm. departments or questions we get on you know I love everything you're saying but what should I do with or what do I do when I want to stop you right there please define spiritual well that's each person I'm I'm saying that that's the everybody's got a different meaning right. of that I want to make sure we're all on the same page feel free feel free well, to uh, I'll tell you my freestyle. understanding. Free, freestyle spiritual. Okay. Um, well, I, you know, people have different understandings of what spiritual means. Some people think that they, they can hold their breath. Uh, I remember once being in an ashram and the, the person leading that yoga session, you know, was like a... There was no there were no drugs in that, by the way. <laughs> I was going to say, what's that about? <laughs> no, he's holding his breath and he says, I like to live on the edge. You know, it's like, on the edge of What? You know, because in that person's paradigm, spiritual means, you know, they're commanding their body or they're connecting to some message from above, whatever. So that's, you know, that's one kind of spiritual. You know, and in the Cabal Center, we talk about spiritual. You know, you're spiritual when you're acting like God. And what is that? That's relentless sharing and loving. We're back to that again. You know, so... Wait, reframe that question again in terms of everyday spiritual. Are we talking about challenges that are not spiritual or challenges that are spiritual? The truth is all challenges are spiritual unless you choose not to see them that way, in which case they're going to be very painful and the suffering is going to be unnecessary and unnecessarily long. And useless. And useless, right. So we want to make sure that, uh, again, we, you know, when you're thinking about what we're talking about and you're applying it to your life, in, in, in how are you going to apply it to your life? Is it going to be a spiritual challenge, or do you choose to now see it in a spiritual frame? If not, basically what you're looking for is that temporary pill, do it for me, make it go away, make the pain go away. Does that mean there's going to be any transformation involved? And the answer is no. And then the challenge didn't meet its its goal, so therefore the challenge only has to get become more frequent and even greater right. and possibly more painful. The universe painful. has a, yeah. a graduation. First, it starts with a whisper. Exactly. And then maybe a friendly conversation with someone exactly. who cares about you. Eventually, the universe comes with a two-by-four right. to yes. slap you upside your head because you're not getting the, right. the value the from the situation. And if you don't know the rules of the system, it feels like, hey, I'm a victim here. Yeah. Why is the universe doing this to me? Why is my mother-in-law doing this to me? Why is uh, my ex doing this to me? Whatever it is, whoever that you want to put in that position. And the and the answer is, I know we don't want to hear it, but the answer is, it's me doing it to me. Mm-hmm. No, it's not me doing it to me. You don't know my life. I, You know what? The law is the law. And all our lives are subjected to the same spiritual laws. And what's the resistance about? I don't want to be accountable. And to the extent that we want to be accountable, the extent that we're willing to be accountable, even though that little voice, that inner critic voice is screaming, absolutely not, you don't know me, you don't know my situation. My friends, we're all subjected to the same laws of the universe. You know, and it's it, really, if you want to win at the game of life, it begins, the first step, accountability. I don't see how, I don't know why, but somehow this is showing up at my doorstep, so somehow, I'm accountable for what's showing up, and it's always going to lead for the good. Yeah. Somehow, some way, it's going to lead to the good. Even if it doesn't feel good now, if you can hold on to that, you will see uh, and you will experience that wisdom in your own life. Chaim, you looked like you wanted to say yeah. something. Well, two things. One, I was thinking, you know, I had an awakening when I had a student in a meeting was telling me, reminding me because he comes from a scientific background and we were talking about how there's the light in the darkness and things like that. And he reminded me, if you, if you, a person's in the army or, you know, in the special forces, they go out at night. You and I, with our eyes, we would say, it's completely dark. I can't see a thing. Then they put on night vision goggles. The night vision goggles don't add light. It's not like those miners' headlights. The light vision goggles are more sensitive to the light that exists in what we call darkness 
so that we can actually see shapes, forms, peoples, etc. So spiritually, it's the same thing. Our eyes, our, our vision is limited. That's why, you know, we feel a victim because we don't realize that maybe somewhere I did something to someone and now it's coming back to me. Perhaps but, even in a previous lifetime. Exactly. Right. But if we realize that our, our senses are limited and then we just accept the, as night vision goggles, the proactive formula, what we're teaching in Kabbalah, then you begin to see and you begin to find greater connections. Yes, I can remember, you know, yeah, I realize I, I embarrassed somebody last week and, you know, now it's coming back to me. Or three years ago something happened and I did something and now it's returning. It's just opening up our spiritual eyes to be able to see the light through the darkness and to be able to extract the gift that the universe is bringing us and that our soul is bringing us, how to be more loving and compassionate and kind and generous and humble. All right, you're ready for the yes, top ten list. Bring and by on, the way, I want to I want to take a moment to remind everybody, you're going to hear us talk about a lot of things. Of course, you're you may be out there thinking, "Wow, this is perfect for me. This is exactly what I need to hear." You may not resonate at all with some of the examples that we're going to talk about. Think about the people in your life who need that message. Share it with them. Tag them in the post. You know, you can find our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, CastBox, and Stitcher. We're on Instagram. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. Find a way to, I, I always feel like we're a gentler messenger than maybe somebody who's actively involved in the situation. Right. It's sometimes refreshing to hear the message from someone who's not involved in the situation or doesn't know the history. But the again, I, I, I the list that I have here, at least, and I'll, I'm open to to adding to the list, it, I've gotten it at least a few times. So that's how I've narrowed it down. Why did I pick this one over that one? Because these are the ones that keep coming back over and over and over again. Scenario number one. And now it's, we're in game show mode. Scenario mm -hmm. number one. Someone is saying false things about you. How, how can you be spiritual? How can you embrace that as a challenge? The first thing to realize, dealing with any challenge is not going to be easy. That's what we call a challenge. It's something that pushes my buttons that doesn't make it easy. So to realize, one, every transformation is not going to be easy, and you will fail along the way. And we have to give ourselves that permission to fail. It doesn't mean we move backwards. It doesn't mean that we are failures. It means that time we didn't get it, but we're going to have another opportunity for it. And that's the actual blessing of the universe. It's going to keep presenting to us similar challenges until we break through, until we pass the test. So we're learning here how to just pass the test right away. So well, first is to already give yourself let, permission. At least if you get don't to a layer of the test. Exactly. Right? Exactly, layer. So exactly. I've heard, we've had people, we, when we used to take phone calls, we even had someone call in and talk about her ex who's mm. spreading lies about uh, her you know, right. lying to the lawyers, lying to the the whole, and, right. and we've had mm -hmm. you know obviously more diluted versions of that. It can be something at work, can be can be something in a friend right. group, it can be a relative. How is it possible to look at that situation as there may be light in it? Ooh. Not there may be, there is light in there it. There is light. How what would, about how, so? Let's say let's say somebody talking about somebody's a gossiper, right? And you know you're not a gossiper. Well, you have two choices: either start battling the person who's saying the nasty things, or just behave more kind and compassionate and less judgmental, et cetera. And then, because people are gonna judge us anyway, but at least show people that you are kinder and loving and just show that what they're saying is a lie. It's not true. But if you're now going to debate and wrestle and you know fight with it, then you're almost proving their point. And so we wanna take that higher road, see the light in it, gives me an opportunity. Maybe I haven't been as kind as possible, or maybe I have been judging people, so let me now judge them for good and just show by example, right, that I'm living the truth and not what they're saying, the lie. And if they're, the lies that they're spreading seem to have negative comes. Co you know, consequences right. on my life, i.e. in legal battles or, right. you know, many times in, in a divorce, you find that one parent tells the kids the something lies. about the other parent. That, I mean, what's more threatening than that? Right. And Let's be realistic here. Um, it's gonna hurt like hell. That's the first thing. You're gonna to want to strike out. That's the second thing. You want to like, you know, get on the horn and retaliate. Retaliate, yeah. and oh yeah, oh, you hit me, I'll hit you. You know that kind of thing. You got to say something that's about me. I'm gonna say this about you. I'm gonna engage and gonna to go to that level. That's now. If you go back to what I originally said about what the challenges are about, 
They're there to help us to see where we're not being proactive in our lives. Either we haven't been proactive in this life or some other life. This is payback, and we have two choices. Either be a victim of it or and be reactive and hurt and painful and suffer or pause and say, what a pleasure. Pause and say, as crazy as what I'm saying, and I believe it's not lost on me. Well, if, if most of our you, listeners have heard pause, what a pleasure. Okay. Well, if you haven't heard pause, with, even if you have heard pause with a pleasure, it's always easy to say it about someone else's problems. <laughs> it's not so easy. It's, it's easier to say it in traffic. In also, traffic, right? 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 Pause <laughs> when, when you're in your own you, car. But, yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But they, the truth, what is the real test here is about them speaking about me or about what I think about them speaking about me. And that what they're speaking about me, I have no control over. But how I'm reacting to how they're speaking about me, that's going to determine if I'm living in heaven or hell. That is going to determine the quality of my life in that moment and moving forward. And that's also going to determine whether I'm going to use that, that event I'm going to forge a ball and chain and unfortunately, you know, tap, uh, uh, attach it to myself and go through life that's my story. This is what they did to me. Who's suffering? Who's the person who's suffering? Because they said some mindless thing. And believe me, there's no angels down here. We've all said mindless things. We've all said insensitive things. We've all gossiped, every single one of us. And we all lie, by the way. It's, we all lie. At one time or another, we all lie. So are we going to now go around and try to change the environment, make everybody stop lying or stop gossiping? No. But that's not what life is really about. Life is about how am I going to respond, and that's either going to be my proactive response or my reactive response. Proactive, heaven. Reactive, hell. You choose. Well, I, a few of the scenarios, you know, mm -hmm. someone appears to be doing something to someone else. Exactly. And and I'm going to put a, a kind of blanket perspective on those those situations where it's possible to seem, it, it's possible to feel like it's happening to you. Someone is doing something to you. You know, in, in Kabbalah, we teach that the whole universe is rigged to get me to be the best version of me. Exactly. So, you know, if, uh, if you're playing on the playground and a kid comes over and hits you with a stick, do you get angry at the stick or do you get angry at the kid? Right. Right? You get, obviously you're not gonna blame the stick. The stick was right. just the pawn, the, yeah. the inanimate object. In the scheme of human existence, all the people in our lives are sticks being that's held so by true. the creator. Wow, that's great. So yeah. if somebody is coming to me, and that's where I think the accountability piece comes in, this somebody is saying, spreading lies about you, speaking falsely about you. Someone in the upstairs production office decided you need this scenario. This is your moment of triumph. This is your Mr. Miyagi, okay? <laughs> Mr. Miyagi is spreading lies about you. And, and this is going to be exactly what gets you not only to be the black belt of right. you, exactly. of your life, yeah. but to win the whatever that tournament was. Like that's really f remembering that even if it's painful, and nobody here, nobody in the studio at least is saying don't, you know, you shouldn't feel pain. It may be painful. Absolutely. And many times feeling the pain and despite the pain being proactive, exactly. this does hurt. However, I'm not going to let it own me, define me, exactly. control, me. control me. Yeah. So part of the looking at it from a bird's eye view, look at it from the creator's view. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't be in your in your on your radar if it wasn't essential. Maybe it came as a whisper before and a book, great book you read and a newspaper article and you didn't pay enough attention. So now it needs to be yeah. as harsh and painful but as sure. it is. By the way, you're making a great point about pain. You know, again, I think we're brainwashed in this culture that we'll do anything not to experience pain. Pain is medicine. Now, if if we would just simply feel the pain and not feel like it's going to kill us, it's, pain very doesn't kill a person at all. Pain is our resistance to the situation. Really, so the level of pain we have is the level of resistance we have to our own soul lesson or our soul payback. Mm -hmm. So let's say I, I took money from $100 from someone in another lifetime and I conveniently forgot to give it back to them, right? Well, now this lifetime comes and I still, little soul whisperings as you as pointed out, you know, my intuition is telling me, you know what, that give that person, you know, the money, but and I still don't listen to it. And then some, somehow along the way, someone, God forbid, takes the, takes the $100. Now I'm a victim of thievery, 
right? And somehow, in some way, the universe has an uncanny way that that person who originally lost the hundred dollars will get the hundred dollars. It'll just as things mysteriously happen to us for no logical reason why someone would speak badly about us. There's also no logical reason why somebody would help us out <laughs> and be there to help us meet that challenge. How many challenges have you had that I've had that somehow some stranger or, you know, people you'd never expect, they just come out of the shadows and come and help, help us through the challenge. Like this podcast, for example, <laughs> this podcast is actually the light sending to you. Why of all the billions of people on the planet, are you listening to this message right now? Because this is your medicine. This is the universe sending you the cavalry to help you through whatever it is you're going through. You're loved. You're, you're good. It's not doesn't make you a bad person because you're going through a challenge. It doesn't matter what the challenge is. It means you're loved. It means you're supported. It means that you are entrusted to go to your next level. Take advantage. Listen. Open your heart. And take it. be res willing to be accountable. I'm not, I'm not responsible for what they do to me. I'm accountable for my my response, response to it right you know it's like um i always thought about it when i first started teaching years ago i used to play tennis and i invite you to those of you who especially play sports to think of it this way you know i had a tennis coach that would sit and i had a very weak backhand so he would sit with a huge bucket of tennis balls and he'd sit there and he'd just keep hitting right at my backhand again and again and again and again and i'm thinking to myself what is he doing this for you know hit to my forehand i'm better at the forehand but what he was really doing was he was helping me to achieve my next level, to become a better tennis player by taking my potential and bringing it out manifest by the challenge of having all these tennis balls hit to my backhand. Now, we learn in Kabbalah, the creator created every human being 100% perfect, gave us a piece of its perfect self. Our work in this world is to become that 100%. So there has to be, in a way, a spiritual coach who's hitting at our weak spot to make us stronger and achieve our potential. So whether it's somebody speaking gossip or whether it's somebody judging you or it's a loss of money or some difficulty in a relationship, those in essence, if you will take it as your spiritual coach of the universe or your soul, helping you to exert your spiritual muscle of love and forgiveness and kindness and generosity and humility, you'll be a better player. That's what going to your next level is. And on your next level, the blessings are much greater. And the sense of peace and serenity is much greater. And there's nothing better than having a sense of peace no matter what's going on around you. That's true. To have that centeredness and that sense of peace and harmony. So I think we're only going to get to two more. Okay. <laughs> okay. At this Let's rate. get shorter answers. Oh, At shorter this rate, answers. we're only going to get to two. Okay. Well, maybe okay. we'll have to do another show where we okay. continue the list. Oh, because twist our arms. Twist yeah. our arms. Go okay. Ahead. When doing what is important for you, what is best for you, what makes you happy is going to hurt someone else. Yeah. Impossible. Well... Well, I would say impossible. In the practical, as you said it, it will hurt the beginning. It will seem to hurt. Like you were saying, the, the one ex-parent who's fighting over custody and speaks lies, et cetera, it could hurt in the moment. Our job is to see the big picture and see through it to understand, yes, it cannot truly hurt me in the long run. My life can be better as I will respond more proactively and more sharing. But like you said before, we have to realize we're not made of stone and steel. I learned that from the Rav and Karen. We will feel what we feel. It's how we respond makes the difference. Well, I, the the examples that I remember from recent memory, um, you know, and again, I think we talked about it the last time you were here. So let's not go too far down that sure. path. But you know, a young person whose career change is going to disappoint her family. Mm -hmm. um, there was another email that we got about somebody from somebody who I think it was also similar. She. She's not in love with her husband anymore. She's just staying there for the kids. Not even that there's some another option, but mm -hmm. it's just a betrayal of her herself to right. stay there. Right. But she knows that leaving is going to be not only destructive to the kids, but also how does she know that it's going to be destructive her, well, to so the kids? This is, well, the let's, this is where That's we need it. to go. It's what be destructive is she's modeling to the children. This is what it looks like to throw yourself under the bus for the god of or the the false god of security or whatever it is that she's you know. They, I've, I had a conversation with someone who a therapist, a marriage therapist. She said it's more damaging uh, for a couple to stay in a toxic relationship. They're doing it for the kids, 
And all the kids are doing is they're learning how to role model a toxic what toxic right. relationship yeah, well, I, like. I, for not me, living it's your, to your truth. Hundred percent. But, but for, I want to I want to address what you said before. You know, I said, oh, it's impossible to hurt someone. No, again, let's go. We're talking. We're arguing semantics. Yeah, this is where I wanted to go for. Le- exactly. Leave the leave the therapy alone. I want to go no, here. No semantics. Is, what does it mean to hurt someone? You hurt their feelings. You hurt their comfort zone. What does it mean to hurt someone? Or is it in whose best interest? Because you're using that word as if. To be hurt is somehow not in a person's best interest. I know a woman whose son is a drug addict, right? And for years, she kind of turned a blind eye to the fact that he's got this devastating addiction. When the point came where she could no longer ignore it, you know, he was being so self-destructive, it's so obvious, um, put him in rehab, right? And then she realizes, you know what? He's a dangerous guy. I don't want him to live in my house when he comes out of rehab, and I'm going to let him know. And so what all the years that she had been raising that child that she did not put in healthy boundaries because she didn't want to hurt him, she really hurt him. So, and now, you know, now she's studying Kabbalah, and she, she does actually tell me all the time how much she appreciates. It's through the study of Kabbalah that she has changed tremendously in herself, has, has feels self-empowered enough to say no to him. And every time she says no to him, what does he do? Does he say, thank you, mom? He says, no, he's angry. And then he goes to his next level because she's not giving him any right. other uh, choice or what we call bread of shame. She's not uh, no longer giving enabling him free energy, him. enabling him that he doesn't earn it. And does he like it? Do we like? In the moment, we all love a free ride. Later, we get depressed and we don't make that connection. But, but also for me, the whole idea of hurting someone. Exactly. Right? If And again, not that you should say, well, okay, I'm going to do what I'm going to do and the heck with you. The heck with you. Yeah. That's not what I mean, but in the same it way, it could be taken that way right. too. That's, yeah. that's why we have to be very careful and and define what you mean by hurt. Well, so, okay, so this is where, you know, if if you and I know I, I can think of you. Hopefully, ho- hopefully you know who who you are when I'm thinking about you right now. But if if you know at the core of your being that this is something you need to do in the big picture for the greater good, even though it might be painful in that moment. Know that that discomfort, we'll call it, even if it's not pain, it could be hurt, it could be rejection, it could be... But the perception of it. Percep- yeah. But that's my point, is that in the same way you can choose how the situation affects you, so can everyone else in the scenario. Yeah. So yeah. that whoever you are worried, wh- whoever is at risk, that's really the right word to say, at risk for being adversely affected... They also get to choose how that defines them. Mm-hmm. That we're really not that powerful... That we get to right. affected, yeah. Meaning, I want to change my career. This woman wants to change her career, and right. she's afraid her parents are going to be disappointed. Mm-hmm. Her boyfriend's going to reject her. All these things, all these dominoes are going to fall. There's a risk there. She doesn't know how what's, they're going to react. But really, if if you want to use, if you want to go there, what's the risk that they're going to be? Uh, Temporarily out of their comfort zone and the way they've pitched older, my or, 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 or at risk, or at risk of what they think about her. Yeah, right. And so she's gonna that, like have to not worship the god of uh, of approval. Her, she's gonna have to do something about her own approval addiction to what other people think about her. Um, that's you know talk about not, not only that, but a person who does have an addiction approval or worship the God of what does everybody think about me? Right. They're inviting a scenario into their life that's Make going to destroy that those walls. Mm-hmm. Right? If if it's at some point she's not gonna get the approval that she seeks. She'll never so get that the she'll approval deal she seeks. with but that's my point. <laughs> that that it's the, that's the, the irony. The universe is rigged so that we are, are the buttons that we have are going to get pushed harder and harder. So what came first, the button or the scenario? The button came first. Yes, the Can button. We just Absolutely. put one thing in, just you know, when you're talking about hurting, because a lot of people out there may have seen or see people. You know, there's the insensitive. I don't care about anyone. I'm going to do what I want. Versus, no, this is what the light is telling me, what truly comes from my soul, and will reveal light by doing the action. Light always has to be win-win. So if a person doing something, like you said, if they're moving into, let's just make it simple, a spiritual life, they really want to push to bring spirituality to people, people, there are going to be people who don't like it. So they're not doing it to hurt the other like, person. Say, they're doing it no, but for Not the even light. a spiritual life. life. Let's say that the change is going to move you to a greater level of influence. Right. right. But the consciousness is about sharing and helping others right. as opposed to just, I'm going to be in a higher position. I'm going to make more money. I'm going to have people more People respect me more. Exactly. 
if a consciousness, well, that's why we say consciousness is everything. If you have the consciousness of the light, then yes, you cannot uh, in the long run hurt other people. If the consciousness is selfish, then you're hurting yourself right. and other people right now and in the long run. Okay. You ready? I think this might be the only one we have time for okay. knowing us. When something that you are working hard on or for, okay. you've been persistent, you've been diligent, you've, been, you, you've crossed all your T's and dotted all your I's, and it's not working out. Yeah. What do you do? How, how, I mean, I, we just got an email yeah. the last month, I think, from somebody who's you know, actually been a Kabbalah student for many years and is trying to make this business happen. It has the sharing in it right. built into it. It's to help people. It's in service. It's, you know, mm -hmm. the, the from what things. I could see on paper, all those boxes are checked, mm -hmm. and it's still not good, taking off. Right. Well, there's so many ways you could answer that question. One is, what is that person's tikkun or soul correction? Is it persistence? Mm -hmm. um, I think he, he, he it, said something like he's been trying to make it happen for about seven years, something. Mm -hmm. there, so three minimum. Let's take put Jeff it that Bezos. Way. How, how long did it take him before Amazon turned the corner and made? He invested over a million dollars and many, many years into Amazon before it even showed a, one penny of a profit. And everyone along the line was telling me, you're insane. Let it go already. Stop. You know, what are you throwing your money away? So how much persistence does this person have? How much certainty do they have? How much do they have to dig to get to the gold? You know, the, the, whether he's got to stop and ask that question, either he's no longer certain about the vision. Because if a person's certain about the vision, they will be divinely guided to, go, to make the necessary changes to, to uh, manifest. I, I'm thinking now of P.T. Barnum. Do you know the story of P.T. Barnum? Of well, you know, The Greatest Showman. Remember that movie, mm -hmm. right? So Don't get he, me singing. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'll I'm do restricting it. also. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll do that on the break. Anyway, yeah. he wanted to, what was his vision? What was his intention? Like this person, I don't know who this person is, but what's that person's intention? It can't just be, Oh, when I make X amount of money, then I'll give a charity or I'll I'll tithe or whatever it is that no. The vision, the passion, the I'm not taking no for an answer has got to be that which has an element of for the greater good of everyone, for adding value to other people, to humanity in some shape, way, or form. It's gotta have those certain ingredients. Otherwise and uh, tell Edison, you know, after 9,998 ways not to invent the light bulb, and he said, well, oh, I guess you just it's impossible to invent the light bulb. No, just two more tries, and you got it. Well, but that, I think that's part of the question is, is he supposed to stop trying? That you have to, he's got to look inside and see what was his original seed of intention. Was it really because of the burning desire to help humanity in some way? He saw it lack, and he really wants to fill that lack. Was it to be busy with himself? Did he try to prove something to his father that he could be a success, and therefore he's going to sabotage it because he himself thinks he was a failure all along, and now this is a reactive life strategy to make some money? I mean, there's so many ways to answer that or question. May, or maybe along the way his ego got in the way. And now he's pushing because you can you can conceptualize either the universe, even with the right intent, the universe is saying this is the wrong path to achieve your goal and move somewhere else. Or it can say, like we're saying, you have to keep persevering. The only person who will be able to make that decision is we ourselves. We have to become more and more honest with ourselves. Where's my intent? What am I thinking now? Did As I got closer, because it comes harder the closer you get to the end, because you get close to the end of that process and you start to already see the reward coming from it, then it's easy to become selfish. Oh, just a little bit more, I'm gonna make those millions of dollars, I'm gonna meet this person, I'll be famous, I'll be powerful, something, comes back to the ego, the challenge of the ego. So this we have to ask, if it's my ego, then I have to keep going. If I'm really going with the light, so maybe the light is telling me, find another way, bring in another person, some other option. But there's a spiritual law that says that no energy is ever wasted. So let's per say this person has put X amount of energy into this project, and this project, for whatever reason, uh, fails, right? That energy, all of the nine years that that person, let's say it takes 10 years for that, pro for that project to finally 
uh, hit its stride and the, and the profits to come in. But even nine years of that energy, that energy didn't go to waste. It's in that person's soul account, let's say, and it's going to come in, out in some other way. So let's say the person, if their vision, if their intention uh, is pure in terms of sharing and they're passionate about it, like P.T. Barnum, I didn't get a fin chance to finish that, so he wanted to entertain people. He wanted to make them happy. He thought it was going to be through a museum. No, that didn't work. And then he thought it was going to be through a circus in a in a building. No, that didn't work. They wouldn't. They threw him out of the building. They the wouldn't building let him. Burned down. The building burned down. Right. You know. And then you know, as a uh, plan B or plan C or plan D, uh, he ended up erecting a tent, and that became the success model. Did he know that? When he first opened right. up a museum, you know, went around collecting artifacts? No. He had to go through these trials and tribulations for the peeling those layers once again to get to his right. truth. Look at, Who knows? Look at something very personal to all of us, the Rav and Karen. When they took over the Kabbalah Center in 1969, did they know what the vision was going to be? They had a vision. Did they know how, who, what, when? No. no. But they followed the light all along. There were plenty of challenges, but the challenges made them stronger and ultimately brought all of us together. Well, but that, for me, is part of the, the message also to this person, is that is the goal the, per, the the product right or is the goal his evolution right and when you look exactly. at the story of all those people that you right. mentioned pt barnum uh, yeah, jeff uh, amazon Bezos, whatever right. his name is sorry not <laughs> jeff Bezos. <laughs> we, we apologize we jeff for that yeah, you know? jeff yeah. Yeah. Send please, me please invite me right. to your next party <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> that the you know the result may be the product or the whatever we know right. and love that they created but you also know that in that story is they had to become more humble. Right. They had to become yes. more loving, as you were get saying. Get beat up in the process. Yes. The, I'm willing to be. The, at yeah. least in the, the cinematic depiction, right. you know, P.T. Barnum is crushed. He has nothing. Right. He lost his family. He lost his business. He is whittled down to nothing mm -hmm. before the solution emerges. Right. And that's the in human my story. Mind, in my mind, if he had been broken down five years earlier... He, it, it, the solution would have had, happened five years you earlier. You have to be broken down. You make a great point. That's part of the human process. We've got to be broken down. We've got to get to that level of zero before we can reveal our potential. There's always an aspect of that in a person's think, life. Sorry. I think like you're also saying, even let's say a person had in mind a product and they go through all the spiritual work to achieve the product. Now once they've got the product, is their spiritual work over? No, now they have to be all the more spiritual in the success. It's easy, you know, like they say typically, it's easy to say where, you know, if a person's having financial difficulty, well, if I won $10 million, I'd give half away to charity. Right. <laughs> but give them the $10 million in their hand and they can feel the cash. Now let's see if you're willing to give half away. Right. Now becomes the next. So like you were saying, it's the person's spiritual evolution. Even in the Kabbalah Center, it's not just about the products or the services. It's how right. we evolve as teachers and how we help our students and the, the people learning in the center to evolve. I want to give endless, you... It's endless. It, well, that's the yeah. problem is that... It's people, not a problem. Well, that's, the, that's, the, that's the prize. The no, prize is remember, that it's never ending. It, it yes. does end. I want to put that because I know for me that was one of my issues in the beginning. There is an end. The creator created us 100%. When you hit the 26 mile at the marathon, the finish line, you finished. Right? When we hit perfection, then we can enjoy the perfection forever, but the challenges and the difficulty will have a final end, and there will be peace and harmony. But per by perfection, you don't mean we'll be perfect. You mean that yeah. we'll have corrected everything that exactly. we need to work through. We'll show the perfection the Creator created us. Before we sign off, I want to give a, a short-form uh, problem-solving formula, challenge, mm -hmm. what's the word, challenge-transforming formula, you know, above all else, like Batya was saying, you also have to be honest with yourself. That's right. right? That's that's mm -hmm. the pre the 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 prerequisite prerequisite for any of this work. If you're not willing to be honest with yourself, right. you're going to be shooting in the dark. And and let's not pretend to be spiritual. Right. Let's let's be real. When you know who you are and you know where you can improve, and a challenge comes up, the first question you always ask is, "Why is this in my movie?" Mm -hmm. Well, That's first, I think the first thing problems. is notice, hey, I am very reactive right well, now. <laughs> okay, yes, you're already reactive. The first question is... That's because, okay. No beating yourself up. No uh, shame, in, no in, guilt. In, I'm, I'm reactive and it's okay. <laughs> All of the, the scenarios we didn't get to as well, but the, yeah. some of the ones we got to, 
you know, it does seem like someone is doing something to me or right. mm -hmm. the economy or the government or the neighbors or the in-laws. It, it often looks like there's someone holding a stick and the stick is beating you. Right. But the first step to coming up with what am I supposed to do with this is how is this serving my growth? Exactly. How, where is the point of transformation for me? What is this reflecting on me that I can do differently? And then once you've got that and you can be accountable, take, you know, okay, you know what? I was a less than perfect, you know, uh, employee. So now I have employees that are doing the same thing to me. Then you can start to come up with a solution. But if you go to step, you know, looking for the solution without the accountability part, without the self-reflection part, you're inviting the scenario to come in a different shape and a different package at a different moment in your life again. Exactly. So hopefully through, you know, we'll, we'll take you the next few weeks through different strategies on how to be more proactive, how to embrace those moments, how to, you know, the, the goal isn't being good, it's being better. So right. we're, we're not, you know, that's why when Chaim said perfection, I was like, ooh, but we're not here to be perfect because right. my perfect is not your perfect. And and hopefully, you know, with enough of us having this heightened awareness, we'll start to see even more more dramatic shifts in humanity over the next coming weeks. I just want to say, I just want to interject one more thing. How can Ten I seconds. be more loving? How, and how can I be more loving? Yeah. Batya needs to trademark that. Batya yes, Salomon, how yes. can I be Love more loving? Love bravely. <laughs> that's my trademark. You can find us again on Facebook at the Kabbalah Center's Facebook page. You can find us on YouTube, IGTV, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, CastBox, Stitcher, and Google Play. If you're not comfortable asking your questions on those platforms, you can always email us at energyboost at Kabbalah.com. Looking forward to seeing you next week and thanking Batya and Chaim so much for joining us. Thank you for you're having us. You're going to have to listen to this. A lot of fun. This last show needs to be repeated a couple times because there are lots of nuggets there. Thanks for joining us and Thank have you. a fabulous week. Bye. Thank you. Bye.